Hello, everyone. Welcome to our workshop on Fundamentals of Intervention in FERC Matters. This video will be available on FERC.gov and on FERC's YouTube page. My name is Matthew Rolnick, and I'm here with my co-presenter, Lisbeth Bouchel. We both work at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's Office of Public Participation, which is also known as OPP. OPP's mission is to empower, promote, and support public voices at FERC. OPP staff are always available to help you and others better understand the Commission's processes and how the public can participate in FERC proceedings. We're excited to answer and incorporate questions that folks have sent from around the country in response to our notice promoting this workshop. Thank you so much for sending in those questions. So with me today is my colleague at the Office of Public Participation, Lisbeth Bouchel. Lisbeth, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Matthew. Thank you. As a reminder, all materials presented will be available on our FERC website and in FERC's official administrative record, known as eLibrary. At the end of the presentation, we will include a resource page with references and links to the Commission's regulations. All past workshops are available to view on FERC's YouTube channel. In today's workshop, we will discuss different ways to participate in FERC proceedings, who can be an intervener, and the differences between filing a comment and an intervention. Before we begin, we need to remind you that these are our views and that they do not necessarily reflect the views of the FERC, individual commissioners, or other commission staff members. Nothing in this presentation should be thought of as a prediction or a forecast of how the commission will act on any matters, nor will this presentation address any pending matter. This workshop will cover different ways to participate and understand the concept of what is an intervener and how it differs from being a commenter. Also, we will have the top five intervention tips in a demonstration video that will walk you through the steps on how to file an intervention. We think that the demonstration will help you see how the things we've discussed today can be put into practice. So let's jump in. Thank you so much for joining our workshop to talk about the fundamentals of intervention in FERC matters, Lisbeth. My first question is, what are the different ways that the public is able to participate in FERC proceedings and projects? There are four main ways to participate in FERC proceedings. The first way is you can file a comment. The public can submit comments. With written comments, you provide information that can clarify facts and address information gaps. Ultimately, more voices will help to lead to better decisions. Filing a comment may often be enough to express your view. Number two, you can file a motion to intervene. A motion to intervene requires that you state your interest in the proceeding and how you will be affected by the outcome of a FERC decision. When you file an intervention, you become a party to the proceedings with additional rights and responsibilities. Number three, you can choose to do both, file a motion to intervene and file a comment at the same time. And lastly, number four, you can file a motion to intervene and a protest. A protest is similar to a comment, but in a protest, you would formally object to the filing. Protests are almost always accompanied by a motion to intervene. When submitting a motion to intervene and protest, Filers often choose to reference relevant regulations. Support materials for this workshop will contain links to key citations and resources. Thanks for listing those four different ways on how to participate in a FERC proceeding. So if I could summarize, essentially, one can comment or one could intervene, and that intervention could be with or without a comment or a protest. So help me understand what exactly is an intervener anyways? How is it different from just being a commenter? That's a great question. An intervener is a formal participant in a FERC proceeding. You must file a motion to intervene to become an intervener. In that motion, you would have to state your interest in the proceeding or state why your participation is in the public interest. Becoming an intervener gives you rights and responsibilities. So who can be an intervener? An intervener can be a person, an organization, or a group that has an interest in filing, or they're going to be impacted by a FERC ruling. 
This grants them the right to participate actively in the process. Filing an intervention allows the ability to file for rehearing of a FERC ruling in a contested matter. This means that the intervener can raise arguments to FERC that there is an error in the ruling and seek to have it changed. FERC can either grant or deny the request for rehearing. If an intervener still wants to challenge a FERC decision, they have the right to appeal in federal court. So just to summarize what I heard, overall, an intervener can seek legal standing by requesting intervener status. They're also someone who may be directly affected by the outcome of a FERC decision or who can demonstrate that their participation is in the public interest. Yes, that's correct. So now that we understand who can intervene, how do we actually intervene? To actually intervene, you must file a motion. You do not become an intervener just by filing a comment. Intervening is a separate process. FERC strongly encourages participants to electronically submit a motion to intervene through FERC's online e-filing system. To do this, you would need to register by creating a login to get into the online system and file the intervention. If you're unable to use the online system, you can send your request by U.S. mail to FERC. The mailing address is shown on the slide. If you plan to submit comments, you can also include them in your filing of a motion to intervene. To help understand the difference between filing an intervention and filing a comment, let's take a look at this next slide. By filing an intervention, you gain legal standing in the FERC proceeding. So if I just file a comment, I don't have legal standing, but what does filing an intervention get me? If you file a comment, you still get your point across. All comments are read and considered by FERC staff. Intervening gives one a more formal status in the proceeding. Among other things, filing intervention allows the ability to file for rehearing on a FERC ruling in a contested matter. A commenter cannot request rehearing. Only interveners can request a rehearing. Actually, though, there are also cases that don't require an intervention to request a rehearing. Intervention is not necessary for people submitting comments in a rulemaking, administrative, or policy proceeding. For those familiar with FERC docket prefixes, these are identified as RM, AD, and PL, FERC dockets. In these dockets, you could request a rehearing if you only filed a comment. Another exception where intervention is not needed is during the pre-filing phase of a natural gas pipeline project because there is no application filed before the commission. Pre-filing cases are identified in dockets PF or PT. Comments are allowed and accepted during the pre-filing phase of a pipeline project. Once the commission receives and notices a pipeline application, then you may file a motion to intervene. So listening to all of that, I hear that people have an important early decision to make as to how to participate. Whether you want to intervene or just comment, can depend on your goals and the circumstances. While intervention does give you additional rights, we're going to talk later about how it also gives you some additional responsibilities. Meanwhile, by filing a comment, you still have an opportunity to have your voice heard by the commission. Commenting in a proceeding is an important activity that can often be enough to get your point across. All timely comments are considered by FERC staff whether you intervene or not. Both intervening and commenting are legitimate, appropriate, and effective ways to participate in a FERC matter. Earlier, we mentioned responsibilities for an intervener. One of the responsibilities, serving the service list, is a requirement for when you are filing an intervention, but it is not a requirement when you are filing a comment. Can you explain what this means and how exactly does one serve the service list? Yes. Under Rule 2010 of the Commission's regulation, it requires that people must be notified when you intervene. As an example, when you file an intervention, you will receive a confirmation email that contains a link to your filing. To comply with the notification requirement, you can simply forward that email to the applicant. Oh, well, that makes sense. For example, if I were to file a motion to intervene in protest, I would need to let the applicant and other active participants know that I formally wanted to join the case and that in this example, was opposing the application. 
how how does somebody know who to notify? How, how would I find that service list? The service list contact information for parties can be found on the e-service link on FERC Online. You can view and download contact names, emails, addresses that are recognized by FERC as an official party. That's great. We've covered the main points about an intervention. Assuming that I decide to intervene in a proceeding, when should I do so, or how do I know by when do I need to file the motion to intervene? That's a really good question, Matthew. FERC will issue a notice. In the notice, it will state the intervention deadline. Make note the deadline is by 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on the deadline date. Wait, wait. So I do not have until midnight? No, you don't have until midnight. The deadline is at 5 o'clock p.m. on the date of the deadline. As with other participation matters, you can always ask OPP to help you find or determine the filing deadline. In addition to timing, you must also follow the standards in Rule 214B, which states you're showing your interest in the proceeding or stating why your participation is in the public interest. Sounds like it's best to not wait to be involved and make your voice heard either by filing a comment or filing an intervention as soon as you're able. That's right, Matthew. The FERC intervention and comment deadlines can arrive quickly, so make sure to pay attention to the deadline in the notice. Now that we understand when we need to file an intervention, we have some options to explore on how. If you have an interest in a proceeding as an individual, but also as a member of an organization, you may need to decide about how you want to intervene, either individually or as part of the group, or maybe as both. If you have interests that are separate from the group, you may want to consider intervening individually. Do I have that right? Right. As with the choice of intervening versus commenting, whether to intervene on your own or as a group really is going to depend on the circumstances. The reason we bring this up is because the e-filing system will ask you. Also, sometimes people file an intervention individually and then join a group comment later on. You know, you just mentioned the the FERC e-filing system. This is the online portal to use when filing an intervention. And I see that the filing system accepts four different types of intervention filings. The first is a dockless motion to intervene, then a dockless out of time motion to intervene, a motion to intervene, and a motion to intervene out of time. Can you help me understand what these differences are? Yes. A dockless or documentless option means that you type out your reason for intervening directly onto a form online. If you are filing a motion with an attachment like a Word document, a PDF, or an image or photo, select motion to intervene option. The FERC e-filing system will let you upload many different types of attachments. And lastly, if you are filing past the due date, you would then have to select the out of time option. The dockless option allows you to type out the reason for filing the intervention in the proceeding. We suggest to write your intervention in a Word document or a similar software to check for spelling. Then you can copy and paste it into the text box. In the dockless option, you are limited to 6,000 text characters and you can't upload attachments. Wow. That's great to know that there's a limit of how much you can say in a dockless filing. If you're going to file dockless, it makes sense to write and edit your reasons for intervening before you go online, because when you're trying to fill out the form online, it doesn't allow for editing after you submit it. Let's discuss what should be included in the content of your request to intervene. Most importantly, you need to describe how the proceeding or project has a direct or substantial interest to you or your organization. If you're not a consumer, a customer, competitor, or security holder, then you need to explain why you or your organization's participation is in the public interest. You will be asked to provide your name or organization and contact information, like an address, email, and a phone number. The information you include will be part of the public record, so make sure you're comfortable including that information. 
It's good to know that that information is needed too, especially if you're filing on behalf of a group. But this brings up another question. If I file an intervention, how do I know if my request is granted or approved? Generally, if no one opposes your request to intervene after 15 days, your status as an intervener is granted. But if there is an opposition to your request in being an intervener, the commission will issue an order and state if your status has been granted or denied. Thank you for clarifying that. If someone misses the deadline to file for an intervention, can they still file late? What options do they have? Yes, you can still file late. FERC does accept late interventions if you miss the deadline, but you will need to include additional support and information. If you look at the slide, that means that you need to explain why you are filing late. You would also need to explain why your participation is not adequately represented by others and that there will be no burden or minimal burdens to others from your late filing. If you are already an intervener, remember to track your case closely by e-subscribing. When you subscribe to a specific docket, you will be notified via email about all future activity. To view updates on a filing, you can also search through FERC's eLibrary record information system. That's right. And if you have any trouble understanding how to use FERC's electronic case tracking tools, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at OPP and we will help you find your way. A few more things to keep in mind. In some matters, for example, where an infrastructure developer files an amendment, FERC has required those who want to challenge the amendment to intervene a second time in order to be able to comment a protest. An example of this occurred in the Algonquin matter, which is noted in the slide. FERC will indicate in a notice in the docket that those seeking to challenge the amendment or other new event need to intervene and comment or protest by a specific date. This means you will need to file a fresh intervention in that circumstance. This really underscores why it's important to e-subscribe and follow the case closely. For example, if FERC issues a notice seeking renewed intervention, you will receive a notification in your email through FERC's electronic systems. Now we will present a video demonstration of a step-by-step -step process of how to file an intervention. Step one, FERC.gov. To file an intervention, go to FERC's homepage at FERC.gov. On the right-hand screen, click on e-file and sign in with your email and password. If you do not have an email and password, you would need to click on new user to register. Since I have my username and password, I'm going to click on login right here. Once you have logged in to the e-filing system, you will see a menu on the left-hand side column under FERC Online Applications. You should be able to see three columns in front of you. The first column will ask, how is your filing to be directed? You will have a variety of options. Select General. Step three, select Intervention. The second column will populate and ask, what kind of filing are you making? Select Intervention. Step four, Filing Type. In the third column, there will be four options to select. The options are dockless motion to intervene, dockless out of time motion to intervene, motion to intervene, and lastly, motion to intervene out of time. Dockless means documentless. It means that you will type out your reason for intervening directly on a form online. If you are filing a motion with an attachment, such as a Word document, a PDF, or an image or photo, select Motion to Intervene option. The FERC e-filing system will let you upload many different types of attachments. If you are filing past the due date, you will select an Out of Time option. For purposes of today's demonstration, we are going to do a dockless intervention. Click Next once you make your selection. Step five, select docket. On this page, type in or you can search your docket number or project number. In the search bar, you can type out the docket number, then click search. 
and select the docket number from the list. On the right-hand side, click on the blue plus sign to select the docket number. Look down below to make sure that the selected docket section to view your selection. The selected docket will now be displayed on the bottom of the web page. When you click next, it will bring you to the next step to write your intervention. Step six, content. Explain the reason why you are intervening as required by rule 214B of the commission's rules of practice and procedure. We suggest to write out your intervention in a word or similar software to check for spelling and to copy and paste into the text box. Cite to the commission's regulation pursuant to section 214. Explain why you are intervening. What is your status? For example, are you a landowner, an organization, or a group? Explain your interest in detail. Describe how the project has a direct or substantial interest to you and how the determination of the project may have an effect on you. State if you represent an interest which may be directly affected by the outcome of the proceeding. Describe how filing for intervention will not allow you or your party to be represented adequately unless allowed to participate fully in the proceeding. After you are done typing your intervention, click next for the next step. This next step is where you will state if you are filing this on your behalf as an individual or behalf of another party, group, or organization. Step seven, filing party. On the filing party screen, there are two choices, to file on behalf of another party or to file as an individual. If you are filing on behalf of a party or group or organization, they would have to be already registered before you get to this step. To register the party, you need to go on e-register. For purposes of this demonstration, we will go through first as a group and then a second time as an individual. This information will be part of the service list and will become public information. On behalf of another party, I will type out the name of my party, in this case, OPP. Then click search. Just like on the last screen, I select my party by clicking on the blue plus sign. And look below to the selected organization section. Now that I've selected OPP fundamentals for participating in FERC matters, I will click next. The next string screen will show you the organization that you chose. Add in the contact email for the organization and click add as signer. Please note the email address which is being added in the contact email would need to be registered before you get to this point. Here I will be typing in my email address and you can see that it will be added below as a signer of the organization. If I need to add a colleague or another person, I can click add as other contact. Then click next and it will bring you to the submission description. But before we get to that, let's see what it looks like to go through as an individual. I will click on as an individual and click next. Here I will put my email address and click add as signer for the individual submission. Again, if I need to add another contact email, I will populate that email in this box and click add as other contact. Click next when you're done. This next step will be the information to describe your submission in detail. Currently, it says dockless motion to intervene of the individual's name under the docket number. You can choose to leave it how it is. Or if you need to add further description, this is the section that you would do so. Click next. This is the final step. Review your information and click submit on the screen to confirm and file your intervention. Now that you have successfully submitted the filing, Expect to receive an email confirming the system received your intervention. If you do not receive an email, check your junk or spam folders. If you have further issues, click on FERC Online Support at FERC.gov or call 202-502-6652. We hope that this step-by-step -step video of filing an intervention on FERC's online system is useful to you. 
It is also available as a standalone video on YouTube and on our website. To conclude, let's review the top five intervention tips. Number one, review all notices and follow the requirements to meet the deadline of when to file an intervention. Number two, remember to state your interest in the case in detail and how the case could directly affect you or state why your participation is in the public interest. Number three, comments or protests can be included in your intervention. Number four, be sure to track the case through e-subscription to stay informed. And lastly, number five, if you have any questions or need further assistance, please contact the Office of Public Participation. And that concludes OPP's workshop on fundamentals of intervention in FERC matters. To view a copy of the presentation slides, links, step-by-step -step instructional video on how to file an intervention, as well as other resources and citations, please visit ferc.gov OPP or visit our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe to all of our materials. Thank you for watching.